fives, I'm assuming. They really suck on their high fives. God. Sixth man, he, he wanted six. <laughs> high five, high six, baby. <laughs> Fuck that. We go all out here. Oh, moving on. On May 22nd, Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, Chad F. Wolf, signed an order that exempts certain foreign professional athletes who compete in professional sporting events organized by certain leagues, including their essential staff and their dependents, from proclamations barring their entry into the U.S. Secretary Wolf said professional sporting events provided much needed economic benefits, but equally important, they provided community pride and national unity. In today's environment, America needs their sports. It's time to reopen the economy, and it's time we get our professional athletes back to work. So in a nutshell, they're going to be opening international travel for professional sport, certain professional sports athletes. It does not mention any type, and it does not mention pro wrestling, but by gum, if Trump has anything to do with it, <laughs> they are there. Uh, that's, that's good news, though. I mean, there's a lot of people who haven't been on shows lately that because they can't come into the country. Um... Dark order. Yeah. I mean, just as simple as crossing the Canadian border. We're not even talking about European and Asian talent. Like, just crossing the border from Mexico or from Canada is is not allowed right now. Do you think coming in from Canada now is like coming in from Mexico? <laughs> yeah, just with more prescription drugs and less illicit drugs. Uh, mm, that's right. Well... That brings us to the end of the Savage Sentinel. And now we can move on to comings and goings. As seen on Double or Nothing and spoke about on this episode of Beast Sticks Podcast, Brian Cage has made his way into All Elite Wrestling. And in case you forgot, he is official. He signed with the company back in January, but was injured at the time of the signing, which Tony Khan got a lot of grief for. And this... And his time of recovery worked perfect in light of the injuries that occurred in AEW last week before the big show. Although I feel Most like he was, indutably. he was probably scheduled as the Joker card. See, I was, I was thinking, I'm glad you brought that up again. That's something else I was thinking about. They didn't really replace Phoenix, right? They just, because they didn't replace Phoenix and then have a Joker card, did they? Yeah, they or no, did, Joey Janela. Joey Janela. Yeah. No, Okay. I, I I was thinking outside of myself. It was wrong. Mm. There you go. Ah, so there you go. Yep, Brian Cage has been there forever. We just didn't know it. Yeah. Actually, we even, you know, reported on it, but I even had completely forgot about it yeah, by this time. January is literally a whole three years ago from now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck. That was basically 2019. Uh. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, moving on, FTR, formerly known as The Revival in WWE, also debuted in this week's AEW Dynamite, helping the Young Bucks take out the Butcher and the Blade. FTR drove up to the building in a truck. Woo, Cody did that like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, he got into that and then he like destroyed his own. Did they drive own... up in Cody's truck? That would have been cool. It might have like, been, hey, but then I like how... This. I like how he destroyed a barricade that's literally his company's barricade that he paid for. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Come on. Um, <clears throat> so after driving up in a truck, they got into the ring, initially teasing they were going to attack Matt and Nick. But then the two helped clear out the Butcher and the Blade. FTR then had a face-to-face -face with Matt and Nick before leaving the ring. Wheeler and Hardwood. Hardwood. <laughs> hardwood. Should just be um, Hardwood. Who are who are F, FTR, you know, that's their legal names. They wrote on Twitter after their appearance, FTR will mean different things at different times, just in case you were wondering. Fear the revolt. Fuck the rest. For the revolution. I like that one. New name, same game, talk heavy, hit hard, wake up, and fight. So it sounds like uh, their, their literal name is going to be FTR. Uh, I like that. I like that. It definitely it's helps fluid. that. Uh, I like that. It, it works when they do f heel and face changes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's fair. It's kind of weird, but it works. 
Well, they're not the first ones to go change it into, you know, change something into a full acronym. Plus, you know, at least they're not taking money out of the mouths of uh, the Revolt, the um, indie team that had been working in North Carolina forever well, I mean, that they, they were stealing their name from. But yeah, yeah, they'll do that. <laughs> Unless they're splitting it 50-50. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are, but just with themselves. There you go. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Major League Wrestling National Open Weight Champion Alex Hammerstone has signed a new multi year deal with MLW. Hammerstone said, as of the re signing, I don't want to just make money and retire. I want to create a legacy. MLW has given me that platform. Not only that, I still have a lot to do in this company, I still have a lot of goals. If you haven't noticed someone, that the world heavyweight, cha- uh, if you haven't, sorry, if you haven't noticed, someone has the world weight, world heavyweight championship, and it ain't me, and that just they don't sit right. There you go. He talks weird. I'm sorry. I have a platform here at MLW to explore everything I can do and test myself against the best out there, and that's what's most important to me. I just want to thank everyone out there and hope you follow me on this journey. Well, where are we following you to? You haven't moved. <laughs> no, I like Hammerstone. I, I'm glad he's sticking there. He's he's a good fit in MLW. Yeah. Another good... F- Go ahead. Wasn't he part of Dynasty? He was. Yeah. He is. Yeah. We like that. Another good fit in uh, organization, Flip Gordon, Villain Enterprise member, is sticking around Ring of Honor, announcing that he signed a multi-year contract with them. Gordon commented, saying, Ring of Honor has been my home for the last three years, and I'm very excited to say I'm not going anywhere for years and years to come, because the mercenary has signed a new multi-year million-dollar deal. Now it's time to win some Ring of Honor gold. Very nice. <clears throat> uh, I'd love to see him in AEW, but, you know, if Skrull want to have their own thing going on, I'm okay with that, too. Yeah, they're doing really good over there. They're, they're making moves. Honestly, eventually, the two companies will start working together anyway, right? I'm sure. <sighs> on Tuesday's episode of Impact Wrestling, a vignette aired for De- Deanna Purrazzo. I am the virtuosa, Purrazzo wrote in the video. Do you know what that means? Allow me to explain. I express outstanding technical ability. I have cultivated appreciation for artistic excellence. Unlike the average human, I have been able to declutter my mind and access space previously ignored. To be truly virtuous, I have formulated the perfect equation for success, which I implement with precision. A unique training that not only lies in technique, but in the movements between allowing my reactions not to be within the stimulus, but within my subconscious knowledge. I am Deanna Purazzo, the virtuosa. God damn, that was an 80s coked out promo. What I love is you didn't <laughs> fucking miss a beat on that one, and you just fucking slaughtered Alex too. Hammerstone's like simple sentence, and you just nailed her fucking shit. I was like, Wow. Wait a make up for that last in, one, buddy. Man. Eloquent thoughts, <laughs> eloquent talking, make your point and make oh, it mean something. That's what this real. thing is about. That's awesome. <laughs> you you nailed it, man. I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was like I said, I was thinking the same thing halfway through. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, now I'm gonna butcher the rest because she's not talking anymore. Probably. On the Wrestling Inc. podcast, she discussed the decision to join, noting the leaps that Impact Wrestling has made with their women's division. I think Impact, along with AEW, when people have asked, where, see, I told you. I think Impact, <laughs> along with AEW, when people have asked where my places are, uh, where my sites are set, those are the two biggest places, stated Pirazzo. I think, especially with Impact, they've signed so many women over the past two to three weeks. Kimberly just debuted. Tasha Steele's just debuted. They have Neva and Jordy and Grace as their champion. It's a lot of people I've worked with on the indies before WWE, so I would be so excited to meet back up with them now. And so would we. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, she'll do great there. Um, Impact Wrestling has been, I, I say still to this day, um, maybe NXT. NXT and, and Impact Wrestling has just the best women's division. You know, she kind of mentioned there, she's like, Impact along with AEW. You can tell she's like, oh, Impact has a better women's division. Yeah. Although that, that last women's title match was one of the best ever, so AEW's doing something right. But Yes, they are. For sure, she's she's going to do great there, and they, they're they just, uh, they're going to continue to be the forefront of women's wrestling, I think, Impact Wrestling. And they should. Uh, Drew Gulak, pasty, has re-signed with WWE. Gulak was recently added back to the official WWE SmackDown roster page on the WWE website. PW Insider reports Gulak has come to terms for a new deal with WWE. We reported pasty just last week that Drew Gulak's WWE contract had expired after he was moved to the alumni section of the WWE website. Gulak was reportedly in contract negotiations, but Drew had asked for more money than WWE had offered him, but that request was not only denied, but served to cease the negotiations altogether. Now, last week, if you remember, we did mention Gulak's attorney, Barry Bloom, said they were still working on a deal to return to WWE that works for both parties, and it looks like those talks must have resumed. He's he's working for what they offered him originally. He's, he's back on <laughs> NXT Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's good. It's good to see that he kept his job in WWE. He was making moves in WWE, and I think this is very positive. Even if he is coming back at the same pay, like we said, in these times, that just that alone is a positive. Yeah, very much so. He, he's definitely been uh, very impressive on the shows I haven't been watching because yes. I haven't been watching. But I do see things, um, and and Gulak and Daniel Bryan is like a it's it's a gift, really. It's a gift, gift of the gods. <laughs> uh, well, now we got to move into the injury report. Luckily, there's only one of these this week, and you'll never guess at who is at the hands of. Oh my <laughs> God! WWE taped next week's episode of Raw at the Performance Center this past Wednesday, and during the show, Kyrie Sane was injured while performing in a match with Nia Jax. <laughs> According to a report from Wrestling Observer, Kyrie Sane was bloodied up after hitting the ring steps during the match. Everyone who I've talked to has said no one's blaming Nia Jax, except for everyone that you're not talking to. <laughs> This was not Nia Jax's fault, even though other things have been. <laughs> he had to add that. <laughs> this this one wasn't her. Give her a round of applause, folks. This one wasn't her. <laughs> Said Dave Meltzer. Huh. Basically, Kyrie Sane got whipped into the ring steps. One person said that she may have stumbled, but she was trying to take it on her side. She did take it on her side. Her head did hit the steps. Her head hit the steps. She was bloodied up. She was knocked silly. It's not known yet if Kyrie has a concussion. However, the match was stopped, and it's not clear if the match will air on television or if it will be edited before airing. Uh. Yeah, I think it sounds like most people are actually sticking up for Nia right now and saying Kyrie kind of wanted to make it look good and made it look a little too good, but... It def- it still definitely does not help Nia Jax. No, no, I'm no. a big proponent of Nia Jax. I, I am a big proponent, and she seems to... The bigger you are, the safer you need to be. That's that's the mentality the wrestlers need to have, right? Yeah, yeah, legitimately. I would say so. And I think that she's just... Not only has she made mistakes, but she's also just been in the wrong place at the wrong time one too many times that... It's almost Boy Who Cried Wolf. Even if, like, the next 12 accidents have nothing to do with her, she's going to be the common denominator, and you're still going to look at it like, ah. Yeah, it could be a multi-woman match. She might not even be in the spot. Somebody's going to blame her for not being there to catch the person. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's sad, especially Kyrie, who is, who is moving on up, not to the east side, but, mm-hmm. yeah. We hope that uh, we hope that nothing major happens and she's back on next week's show. Yeah, uh, Nia Jax needs a little bit of work. 
But I didn't see the spot, so I really can't talk. I don't know. It's just funny that it's her again. You can yeah, talk.